creates this hole. Man. As the music plays in the background, we are wanting to uh, open up with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we exalt your holy name. Your name is above every name. And it's in you we live, it's in you we move, and it's in you we have our being. As we dig into your word, we pray that your people will go back and study, meditate on your word because you have a lot to say to us. And Father God, we have a lot to receive. And you said as many as received to them gave you power to become sons and daughters of the Most High God. So Lord, we submit this time to you. And that we ask you for guidance and direction in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. Uh, we just thank God for another opportunity to come before you and share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were talking about Thessalonians. We were teaching out of the book of Thessalonians uh, 4 and 13. And I just want to reiterate on some things that uh, we talked about earlier and before. And uh, then we'll move up to speed. But you must go back and read the word for yourself. You must go back and study. Meditate on God's word. Study God's word. Um, live God's word. Praise be to God. We thank God that you uh, joined me at this hour and this time. But it's so important that after the, we finish talking and sharing, you will go back and pray and meditate on. Find some other believers. Get with some ministers. Get with some pastors. And just you know, go through the scriptures and read and study and pray. And in First Thessalonians 4 and 13, he said, uh, I, he said, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep. I would not have you to be uninformed concerning them that are asleep, that you sorrow not as others which have no hope. We are believing that in this season, in this hour, with the virus, with the bad news, with the so many deaths that have occurred, Hallelujah. In the midst of all the confusion and in, in the midst of all the things that we can go through, the Bible tells us that we ought to comfort one another with these sayings. As we read God's word and pray, it will bring comfort to us. So many of us have not had the opportunity to comfort one another because of distance. We haven't been able to comfort one another because um, they, they said you have to keep, you, you, you can't uh, visit those persons at the grave site. You can't uh, minister in bulk and the family members are scattered all over the place and, and and some of us are getting noticed at the last minute of, of of one loved ones being lost but the bible tells us with all that being we can comfort one another with these things with the word of god so as we read the word of god the word of god is the lamp to our feet and the light into our path and it will strengthen us we are strong in the lord and in the power of his might and that's how we continue to go forth. In, in, in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13, uh, it says, Be not uninformed as the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Be not in, uninformed with this hope. It says, He does not want us to be ignorant. Praise be to God. And that word does not mean stupid. It does not mean, you know, ignorant in, in the sense that you don't understand. But it means that we just uninformed about having this thing called death. The Bible says, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Death does not have victory over us. But the sorrow and the pain, it lurks around and it wants to keep us in bondage. But we can be free even in the midst of death. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. When we are informed about what it means. It says, once a group of people called the Sanhedrins, uh, hallelujah, they had a problem, and I keep using the word Sanhedrin, but it's really the Sadducees. I said it on another tape, correct it, it's the Sadducees, not the Sanhedrin. It's the Sadducees who didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead or in eternal life. There's a lot of Sadducees still living in this hour and this time. They do not believe Praise be to God, first of all, in Jesus Christ. They don't believe in his death. They don't believe in his burial. Neither do they believe in his resurrection. Praise be to God. Do not, they do not believe in eternal life. Uh, there's still some that Sadducees spirit around in this day and age. They challenged Jesus on these issues. 
He told them that they were in error. Jesus told the Sadducees, you are in error because they do not know, watch it, the scriptures. Not only do they not know the scriptures, they do not understand the power, nor the power of God. Don't know the scripture, and they don't know the power of God. He asserts to them, Jesus says, God is not the God of the dead, but he's the God of the living. Now, I gave you these scriptures to look at, and I know you went back and searched it out just a couple of days ago. Matthew 22 and 32, and also John 4 and 14, and, 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 and John 5 and 24. We say go to John 6 and 40. It says all four of these gospels end with the thrilling description of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Bible clearly teaches that in the resurrection, we have a guarantee. In the resurrection, there is a pattern. And in the resurrection, there is the power of our own resurrection. All right? So when you read the word of God, you find out that there's a guarantee. You find out that there's a pattern. And then you find out it talks about our own resurrection. So all of you who are struggling with death and are hurt and nobody talked to you, you haven't been ministered to, and there haven't been a funeral, and there haven't been a, a eulogy preached, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. He'll bring you peace in the midst of the storm. I told you, for over 30 years, I've done numerous funerals. There's not been one that's just been, you know, so, I was so glad to do it. No, it's been sorrow and pain. You know, I did my brother's funeral, my mother's funeral, my relative's funeral, and, and then people in the body of Christ, you know, we laid them to rest. But that's not the end. And although I cried and although I wept and although you, you're crying, the problem is we are destroyed by the lack of knowledge because we don't understand and because we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to speak to our heart. Praise be to God. We walk in darkness. Our minds are clouded as to what God has promised and what God has said. We have a guarantee. It's a pattern already in place that has been done and it's the power of our resurrection. When Jesus, he came that Jesus says, because I live in John 14 and 19, because I live, you will also live. Is, it, is God good or what? He said, because I live, you will also live. So let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20. But before we go there, Romans chapter 8, verse 11 says, it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, well, in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his son who indwells you. So go back and read it, meditate on it, and let's backtrack for a minute because one of the most important things is for a believer to trust and know that he or she is saved. Romans 10 and 9 says, before we go any further, says, if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ with thy mouth and believe in our heart that he died and rose from the dead. It's in vain for me to just tell you all of this information and not tell you that you're not alone when you start reading it. Once you give your life over to Jesus Christ and accept him as your personal savior, he says, I'm standing at the door and knocking, let me in. And when you let allow him to come in, Praise be to God, he allowed the Holy Spirit to speak and teach to your heart, speak to your heart, and he connects you with family and friends and ministers and teachers. But praise be to God, there's nothing like being connected to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will begin to lead and guide you. Because I'm reading and I'm going at a speed that you're like, what is he talking about? But as you go back, settle down, get quiet before the Lord, call some other believers who read and study and ask him what God is saying, it's going to bless you tremendously. So, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he who raised Christ, praise be to God, from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies 
through his spirit who indwells in you. Praise be to God. So we, we thank God for him dwelling in us. As we go on to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, praise be to God. 1 Corinthians 15, hallelujah, give you time to, to, to look it up. But go, go to 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to start at 20th verse and just read the 22nd verse. Praise be to God. Uh, and it talks about the order. Remember we said it's an order, the order of resurrection. Verse 20 says, and we, we're going to go up to the first verse in a minute, but watch this. In verse 20, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. I'm trying to give you some time to, to get your Bibles and look it up. It says, but now Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who what? Not are dead, but are asleep. We call death sleep. For since by a man came death, one man came death, by a man also came the resurrection, praise be to God, of the dead. Verse 22, for as in Adam all died, so also in Christ, uh, uh, circle this word, all shall be made alive. Let's look at some of the facts about the resurrection found in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter starting at the first verse. It reads like this. Now I make known. We can stop right there. He says now I make known. If we are ignorant of God's word or ill informed what God says you don't have to be. As you allow Christ Jesus to dwell in you, the Holy Spirit to guide and teach and lead you, praise be to God. Again, find some other believers that know Jesus and love Jesus and sit down and meditate with them. Watch what it says. I make known to you. Huh? I make known to you. But this is the part that you have to get. It's to the believer. I make known to you, brethren. What does he make known? Underline that. I make known to you, brethren, what? The gospel. Praise be to God. Underline that word gospel, the good news. Hallelujah, the good news, which I preached. Hallelujah. He says, now, talking about the facts of the resurrection, he says, now I make known to you. You don't have to be in ignorance. You don't have to walk in ignorance. Praise be to God. You don't have to worry about what somebody else thinks or believe. You can know that you know that you know that you know. And it's so important to know because in this time where so many people are dying and so many people are not able to uh, hear about what takes place, what truly takes place because uh, they're not, you know, going to the funeral homes and they're not being able to bury their family. <laughs> Go to the word, praise God. It says, now I make known to you, brethren, believers, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive. Notice here, notice what's happening right here. He's making it known. He's making it known to the believer. The good news, well, watch this. You received in which also you stand. So not only has the word of God been given to the brethren, to the believers, to the sisters, who, whoever, as many as received to them, gave me power to become sons and daughters. The good news, the gospel, which was preached, hallelujah, one needs to do what? Receive. He says, which you received. Did you receive it? Did you receive it? You can hear it, but have you received it? Have you received it? This first verse, just the first verse, you can't even get past the verse, first verse, and I'm speeding because I need to move on, but it says, receive in which you also stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against anything that might come against you. You're standing on the promises of God that cannot fail. Now, I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, and which also you stand. And then he says in verse 2, by which also you are saved. Saved by his power divine. Saved from death and destruction. Saved from eternal damnation. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. You received it. You heard it. Praise be to God. 
You become a brother, a believer, you trust God, you accept him, you you, you begin to rejoice because uh, you, you, all the bad news you've been receiving about life and about death, now you hear that Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he's the life, and no man can come unto the Father, but by him is being preached to you, you receive it, you got to receive it, praise be to God. How many times do you hear things, but you don't receive it? You heard it. I heard it. Ah, let me keep going. No, you received it. And, and receiving it, meaning that you're not just going to be a hearer of the word, you're going to be a doer of the word. To hear, to be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, guess what? You're deceiving yourself. To hear me preach this to you, praise be to God, is not enough. I don't, I don't care who. Who, what teacher, what preacher, if you're not receiving it, if you're not spending time in fellowship, if you have not given your heart over to Jesus Christ, praise be to God, you're missing some of the pieces. God still loves you. He can still work with you. But praise be to God, God wants you to be an ambassador, to go and preach the gospel, hallelujah, to those who are lost, hallelujah. Save, if you, listen, listen at the condition. It says, He's given us the word, the gospel he preached, we received it, like a verse 2, by which also you are saved. Now watch this, the condition, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. You can believe in vain right now. Hold fast to it. Listen, I'm not making this up. Look at what it says, for I delivered unto you as the first importance what i also received that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures hallelujah so look at verse two again after we read that by which also you are saved if you do what hold fast what the word which i preached the good news the gospel preached the gospel to you unless you believe in vain you can believe in vain Praise be to God. Hallelujah. For I delivered, verse 3, to you as of first importance what I also received. Mm. That Christ, what did he do? He died for what? Our sins according to the what? Scriptures. The word of God. You've got to read, meditate. Oh, don't just hear some preacher tell you what it says. And I'm telling you, I've been hearing and listening to some awesome preachers and some powerful words. And thank God I was able to go back and meditate on it and read it. God has been speaking to my heart. I'm telling you, hallelujah, go back and read, go back and study. I, and you know, I'm on verse three or four, but just these three scriptures alone, you can spend all day just meditating on it and watch God move forth like never before. According to the scripture, look at verse four, and that he was buried, according to the scriptures, and he was raised on the third day. According to the scriptures, my God, my God, according to the scriptures, look at verse five, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the 12, verse six, after that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have what? Fallen asleep. Praise be to God. Then he appeared, James then to all the apostles, and last of all, as it were to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. Verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles who am not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But, watch this, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, I, I persecuted the church. I disobeyed God. I walked away from God. I didn't pay attention to him. I didn't serve him. I didn't read. I didn't pray. I didn't study. I didn't meditate. I, I was doing my own thing. But something happened. Paul was persecuting the church. Praise be to God. If you preached the gospel, you were going to have a problem. And Paul stood there and allowed things to go. He cheered. Praise be to God. The, the stoning of the church. The dying of the church, the destruction of the church. But uh, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am because of God's grace. 
not because of my education, not because of my, 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 my finances, not because of my last name. All the things that we count as priorities in our life is not necessarily the things that gets us to heaven and gets us connected to God. You have to have a relationship with him. He came all the way from heaven down to save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Look at this. But by his grace, his mercy, his unmerited favor, I didn't deserve to get it. But he died and shed his precious blood on Calvary for me. Hallelujah. For you. He didn't wait till we got ourselves together. He had us in mind from the foundation of the world. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me did not prove vain. But I labored even more than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Grace. Just say grace. Every time you think about God's grace, it just should bless you. It, it just should take you to another level, praise be to God. Because you couldn't have done this by yourself, praise be to God. Hallelujah. God's grace and mercy and peace. His grace, his mercy and peace. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. He says in verse 11, Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so we believe. Look at verse 12. Now if Christ is preached, that he has raised from the dead, how say some among you, hallelujah, they say that there is no resurrection of the dead. How, how, how do they say it? He says, if Christ, if Christ, praise be to God, mm, hallelujah, is raised and is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is vain. It says, moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we are witnessed against God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise if in fact the dead are not raised. We're talking about the dead being raised. And this is where we're not going to be able to finish it, but we'll get to it. This is where it's a blessing to know about what God said about death. The dead in Christ shall rise again. Praise God, my time is running out. Praise be to God. The dead in Christ shall rise again. It says, for if the dead are not raised, praise be to God, not even Christ has been raised. Verse 17 says, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in sin. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ has perished. And if we have hope in Christ in this life only. We are of all men most pitied, most miserable. This last verse, I want you to meditate on it. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Verse 19, if we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are all men most pitied. But we thank God this is not it. We have a living hope, a lively hope. If that's the Lord says, a, a hope that fadeth not away, a hope that's reserved in heaven. Remember we started off with this scripture, 1 Corinthians 15 and 20, talks about the order of the resurrection. It says, not only our hope, but the order. Look at verse 20. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are not dead but are asleep. Verse 21 for since by a man came death, by a man also came resurrection of the dead. For as Adam, hallelujah, all die. Adam, all die. Say it with me. Say it with me. Adam, all die. 
so also, say this with me, in Christ, somebody say in Christ, in Christ, all shall be made alive. So as we continue to go on this journey, and as we're about to close out, we want you to understand that death is not the end. Hallelujah. And I, and, I, and I want to preach this and I want to minister this because so many people are asking questions and want to know what's going on and why God and what does God think about all this. But God has already, hallelujah, pronounced his verdict on death. Death has no power. It has no authority. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Romans 10 and 9 says, Thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Won't you do it now? Won't you confess them? There's a lot more that we need to talk about in terms of death. But if you go back and read this, call one of your friends. Call one of your pastor friends who know the word of God. And go over this scripture in, in 1 Corinthians 15. And meditate on it because it's going to start to bring comfort to you concerning your loved ones. And concerning the ones who have gone on and you haven't been able to talk to them. Concerning those that you're worried about. But more importantly, concerning those who are still here. Somebody asked me the other day, Pastor Bishop, what do you think about you know, uh, people who've died and I say, I said, that's not my call. Only person knows where somebody is and is spending eternity is God himself. We can't make that call. We don't go to funerals and say, hey, where well, they went to heaven? Oh, they went to hell. Oh, you stay light. No, 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 no. Yes, our life here on earth, may the works we've done speak for us. We should live and walk holy and be holy. He says, for I am holy. But he did not give us the authority or the power to say he went to hell or he went to heaven or he went to heaven or he went to hell. Praise be to God. Only God would know that. Hallelujah. We thank God for those who have led us and leading us in the direction to spend eternity with God. I've met some beautiful people in my whole lifetime. My mother, I, I kid you not, bless my heart to fall in love with Jesus all over again and just love on him and acknowledge him and believe him and trust him and be ready when he comes because he's coming again so soon. Can I say this? I, can I just sing this song? People say, Bishop, whatever you do, don't sing. I'm singing because I'm singing to audience of one. Be ready when he comes. Be ready when he comes. Be ready. When he come, oh, he's coming again so soon. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. He's coming again so soon. Be ready when he comes. Are you ready? Are you ready? If he was to come today, are you ready? Yes, yeah, invite him into your heart now. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Close us out. Come into my heart. Come into my heart to stay. We want to just give you some information about where, how you could uh, connect with us in the name of Jesus. Praise be to God. We you can connect God. with us on our website at www.stg-ct.org. That is www.stg-ct.org. You, if you have any prayer requests or if you want to do any online giving and to find out more information about the ministry, you can go to www.stg-ct.org. And give me the information. Let me know that you gave your heart over to Jesus Christ. Just, just please, just say, Pastor, I, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ so we could rejoice with you and we can encourage you, praise God, and we can give God thanks for you. Hallelujah, read God's word. There's so much to tell you in such a short time, but if you would go back, and meditate on God's word. Study it. Ask God to open your understanding. Watch what God will do for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. In Jesus' name.